he took a key blank and he hollowed it out. And at the end, he put this angled angled piece, and it shined to a mirror finish. So just inserting this in, <laughs> insert this into the lock, and then use a light to see. And, and if you're doing it by hand, you use a, a small magnifying glass to help you. But you, we, we took pictures of it, so you could do it with, pic, with photography too. You could actually go in and decode all this. So if you look, you see we're looking at this, and you see on the right-hand side there's that little cutout. So you remember how the wafer, the, the traditional wafer lock work? It's very similar. There's this cutout here, and we could see you know, how deep down this is. And uh, Josh could probably better explain this, but we don't have time to have a smart key talk again. But So here's an example. Josh, do you know what bidding that is? It's a four. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Josh, what bidding is that? That's five. a five. <laughs> so you see, you, you can get good at this so that you can just look at this and go boom, boom, boom. You, defi- the, you the- definitely have to see it a little bit first. You know, yeah. it, it, It'll take a little bit to get your sight reading down, but yeah. once I you mean, have it. There's only, what, six, six steps in it? So it's really easy to just remember what all of them look like. I mean, you could take Josh's photos and just lay them out you know, yeah. <laughs> one through six and then just find which one works. And so here's another one. What, what depth is that? That's a one. <laughs> another big hand for Josh. Yeah, we, we think awesome. stuff like this is really cool. Something you might like to know. This is probably, it also works on the, the Schlage secure key. These two locks are taking over the residential lock market. Within a, you know, a decade, you will all probably have something like this on your door. So if you watch Tobias's talk, you know how easy it is to just break it open with a screwdriver and a partial key blank. Important note. Uh, that that no longer works on the signature series. That's true. On, yeah. on the quick set, it, it doesn't work on the signature series, and the torque attack doesn't work on the Schlage. Yeah, but and maybe somebody will come up with something soon to, to replicate it because they're very similar locks. And also, I, a really important to note: there are some awesome attacks on these locks. They're super vulnerable to all sorts of things. They are still better than those companies' previous <laughs> locks. It's they true. are moving forward, so keep that in mind, even as we destroy them. <laughs> okay, so we talked about um, what if you don't have the right keyway? Well, just in, in a sense, uh, let's say you have an organization and you need various levels of security. So obviously you could have straight master keying, but then that might not be as secure as you want. You could go farther and have this sectional keyway thing. So A is one keyway. We could put any key in that lock. B, we could put only keys that have a ward on that little bottom right portion, and so on and so forth. But then if you take a D key, again, you could fit into everything above this. Whoa. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just this idea that if I, if I know or I can figure out the, the, all the sectional keyways in the system, I can make myself a D key. And then I can have it work for all of those. And I can make D key blanks to impression all of those. And I can make D key blanks to bump all those and do all these other things we've been talking about. So in Europe, it's uh, kind of crazy how many keys they have because they have all these competing countries and companies. It's a lot different than the U.S. where we have, we can count all of the major lock manufacturers on one hand, on half of my hand. Now, I'll let you guess which half. But... uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what they've done is that locksmiths there have, have needed, required to get so sophisticated because when you want to duplicate keys for people, you can't have, you know, 200 key blanks for this to, and hope that, you know, you have the right one. So what they did is they, they'll go through these systems, figure out what key blank fits the most number, and then they'll, make, they'll get a lot of that. And then whatever else they can't get, they'll make, you know, 10 or 20 of those. And then you have 200 of D. And then if somebody really wants these other stuff, then maybe you can make it for them. So it's just a different attack. And again, we could do this with the easy entry. We could, we could just mill the key. Um, you could do it if you have a mill at home or a CNC kind of a thing. A mill at home. I have a I mill mean, at home. I mean, some people do, yeah. <laughs> it's a good craft. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of you people would have a mill at home. <laughs> and that's just... So here's yeah. just, just examples. So that would be the D in the B key way. So maybe you don't have the, the key blank. Maybe getting a key blank is very hard. You know, maybe it's one of these restricted locks where it's really hard to get a key, uh, just a, a direct key blank. Well, what if we could just get the wrong key and we could somehow modify that? Well, getting the wrong key is really easy because we could just buy the same lock and then we'd have a, you know, it'd be a similar key, but the cut pattern would be wrong. So from that, what can we do? Well, we'll just go through it again. All you. Uh, really? No, that's all you. Oh, okay. Apparently it's me. <laughs> okay, so the basic way to master key a lock 
um, a pin lock. I know how it works, but he's better at talking. <laughs> sure about it does, sure it does. <laughs> um, so the way it works is that in the traditional system, we have a top pin and a bottom pin, and there's only one point where those can split, and the pl- the inner piece can rotate, right? What if we put a, a very small pin between them? Now we can raise it to both of those positions. You know, we can have the green pin up to the shear line, and we can have the green pin above the shear line. You know. And then we can open the lock that way. And so by adding these pins in different pin stacks, we can make master keys. And then the different master keys have different cuts to raise these differently to determine your level of access. So here's just some examples of how it works. Here's just the normal lock. Here's maybe you know, one, of, one of type of key. Here's a different type of key. And again, we could have you know, the first green pin be above and all the rest be below, and that key would work. So the more master pins you add, the more... The, the more key codes in the system work. So you reduce your, your, your number of, of uh, you know, keys that don't work. And so it could be problematic if you have a very complex system where you get to the point where just almost any key will work. And so, and this works perfectly, the, uh, <laughs> the quick set smart key yeah. has 243 possible key codes because the, the bidding is just really bad. It's not, it's not master many. keyed. But there's only 243 keys. And if you use a subset of that, a 32 set, you could probably open the vast majority of them. You might have to force it a little bit. But again, we found out they're quite easy to force. <laughs> and again, so just different stuff. And so that would be that. Why don't you yeah. talk about decoding? Uh, oh, that's, that's the part I needed you to talk about. Really? Yeah, no, I could have talked about everything you just talked about. Oh, well, apparently you can't look back. All right, it's yeah, loading. no. Please hold. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what if, what if you're in a system that's... Uh, that's master keyed, and you don't have the master key. How can you get the master key? Now, again, this is all for fun and research and profit. Don't pick a lock you don't own or have permission <laughs> to pick or open with keys and so on and so forth. So what if, what if uh, you wanted to figure this out? You had to as part of your job. <laughs> um, well, we could take a blank. We can cut it similar, but we'll leave one cut really high, and we'll see if that works. And then we'll file that to- that cut down one cut depth. And again, we could use the key gauge or, or direct measurement to make sure we're cutting down one depth at a time. And we'll just cut that down one by one until we get another key that works. So then we figured out, okay, that back pin stack has the master key at this position. So these two keys for that back pin will work. And then you can go through this, you know, doing all of these depths and f- figure out the full master key system. That's really simple. I should have known that. Jeez. Yeah. And, uh, and if, you have, <laughs> if you have access to enough That's keys awesome in attack. the system, if you have an access to enough keys in the system, you can look at the patterns of cuts because, you know, in, there's, there's different systems for master keying so that you increase security and reduce the chance of a user key being able to be modified into a master key. So they'll, they'll have this thing where, okay, uh, a four cut can only be in this spot and it can't be on a user key. It could just never be. So if you have an access to enough keys, you could just look at, you know, you can sort through them and find the patterns and try and decode master keys, or even not the master key, but like higher level keys. Looking at uh, people's keys at parties is one of my favorite things to do in the world, uh, and just kind of giving them a quick overview of the security in their lives. Um, the, the big one is occasionally if people, uh, you know, I, I can figure out that people know each other because I will see two keys that are obviously in the same master system. I'm like, oh, you know Kenny? Or they're like, oh, it's like, it's magic tricks. It's awesome. It's, 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 it's my favorite thing. Okay. How many of you know how key bumping works? Ah, okay. You guys I'm, awesome. I'm going to teach you that a lot of you actually don't at the end of this, though. Because it doesn't actually work how we all say it works, but go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, well, uh, well, no, He's I'm, the expert, apparently. Well, no, so, so the uh, okay. So everybody says that it's this Newton's cradle effect, right? And we have a bunch of slides to that uh, to, to that point. Those, um, are, well, those are good slides. We they're great them. slides, and we're going to show them anyway. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you why they're wrong. Um, so you take a key. Uh, it can even be a, a usable key. I may have one on my key ring that I could pass around. Fabulous. Um, and you cut it down to its, uh, and we should have a picture of, oh, okay, so this is just showing the Newton's cradle thing again. Basically, it's a transference of energy. When you have this special key, it sits down in the bottom of the keyway, just touching each of the, bo- each of the bottom of the key pins. You strike the bow of the key, the part you hold in your hands with, like, the back of a screwdriver or something, and there are bump hammers. We'll have a picture of those in a minute. Um, the energy transfers into the bow of the key, into the blade, of the key into the key pins, which then transfers into the driver pins, 
which then dissipate their energy on the springs uh, above the lock. And this is the, I should have put these in slightly different order. This is what the bump key is going to look like made okay. from a user We're, key. I'm passing around uh, two bump keys that will probably work on the majority of your doors. One's a quick set and one's <laughs> a slag. And there's, there's a very, very good chance you all have that on your doors. Unless you got the, the, uh, the new smart the key. The smart key. <laughs> and then I'll just bring a screwdriver. <laughs> um, okay, so, so yeah, so that's the theory is that there's this big separation. And I think we have... Yeah, okay, so this slide's going to take a while on my poor little computer. It's a huge, huge GIF. It's, it's loading one. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming. We have technology to tell okay. us. Oh, no, the next one is. You're right. Why did I have to load that one so long? That's embarrassing. Okay, so boom, this is the theory. And then those driver pins in theory dissipate their energy on the springs and come back. And in that moment that they're separated, there's a big gap where the shear line is supposed to be, and you can just turn the, turn the bump key in the lock. Now, this isn't actually how it works, though. <laughs> okay. um, and oh, I'll, I'll just you can. So again, we, we talked about all about key blanks and, and how to how to get this. Now, obviously, theoretically, you need every key in the world to have 100% efficiency. But in the U.S., we only really sell two locks. Yeah. Now, all of these locks can be open with those two two keys. Maybe maybe one more. Maybe a master because those there's no master in there. Yeah. But we don't sell a lot of locks and a lot of keyways. Yeah. Especially our, for residential loot. Our keys. lock diversity in America is uh, is pretty weak. Yeah. Um, diversity always better. Um, okay, okay. So, but, but, but wait, one, really importantly, it doesn't okay. work this way. It doesn't. This isn't how it works. And all of you can, when you hear some other idiot yapping about this and telling you how it works, you can say, ha ha idiot. No, this isn't how it works. The amount of energy you're putting into the bow of that key is far more than the small brass parts can handle. Uh, in fact, the people at Masterlock who don't do much right, some of their R&D team actually took some great high-speed photography of this phenomenon because the first generation of like bump-proof pins and things like that all failed miserably because they were all working off of the theory and none of them had done the due diligence to actually watch how the attack happened. Holy crap. Gross. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> huge bug, huge creepy bug. Flicked, yeah, yeah. yeah, nice work. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, so in reality, what's happening is that they're ricocheting. Uh, each pin, each key pin, driver pin combo will ricochet against each other two to three times per strike. So what you're really doing is just creating chaos inside that lock and then finding a path through it. It still works. It still works great. But until you know how something actually works, you're not going to be able to build a solution to it. End of my rant. Okay. <laughs> so again... Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 100% efficiency. Even if you have a, a crazy, you know, rare keyway, you never underestimate your attackers. <laughs> <laughs> and again, a tool's used to bump them. No, no big deal. Just a piece of rubber on another piece of rubber. Uh, yeah. Cool. Let's yeah. Let's roll through this one. We got about 10 right. minutes left. Uh, okay. So uh, these two are going to roll together. This is a uh, the Schlage Everest. Uh, this has a small pin on the bottom side of the uh, of the plug that actually fits into a small hole in the housing. It's called a, a, a key pin or a, a check pin, pin, side pin, side pin, check pin. Those are two are right, the other one wrong. Um, and so this is fantastic because now you can't actually, you know, you, you put your tension wrench in, you apply your tension, you go through and you pick, and either nothing happens because you can't actually apply appropriate attention with that one blocking you, or you know maybe you set some things, but nothing turns anyway, because once again, that's still blocking you. Uh, this is with the key inserted. It pulls that check pin back into the plug of the lock, and now you can rotate yeah. fully. And the, the key has a little a little mark, a little oh, yeah. extra ledge here, that, and that's what raises it. And that, that's that, a good point. that lower part there is so that you can't modify the key to be uh, one of their next line of keys, which we'll talk about in a second. However, you can make a tension wrench out of the bottom of one of these keys. They're all raised to the same. The side pins are all They're identical, exactly the and same. the cuts on the keys are all identical. So you could just file a key in half to be able to defeat the pin, and you also have a tension wrench with, with, with which to pick it. So obviously you still have to pick the pins in the lock, but this defeats half, you know, about half, I'd say, because that's also <laughs> part of the locking mechanism. Yeah. And so, again, yeah, you yeah, just put that is. in there. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I, I hate. To, I feel a little bit ashamed to continue with the meme of the con, but Schlage is continuing to do it wrong. Um, so there, regional sidebar attacks. Uh, 
So you have your check pins, that's super simple. All of those check pins are exactly the same. But now you have crazy high security stuff that are still working sidebar. So you have the Asa Twin Combi, great lock. Schlage Primus, the Fichet 480, on and on and on and on. All of these locks have sidebars. And there's a, a, you can see in this key, the normal Schlage, and you see those cuts on the actual blade itself facing you. Those are operating small finger pins, which, uh, which set a sidebar in the lock. And I have some photos of that in a second. Um, so uh, the problem with Schlage, though, is that their primary locking mechanism is very 